the water when it comes to safety there is no compromise so always read and follow all manufacturers guidelines welcome to diy project trophy today we're working on the fuel tank area in my 21 foot trophy this project has a challenge rating of 8 out of 10 it's glassing day and the three day forecast is overcast and 16 degrees. My supplies are arranged in order. I have a game plan in case things get hectic. And I've prepared the surface with acetone. I made my first wet layup station using a black garbage bag and all of my expendables are close at hand. I wet out the stringer first before I make reinforced resin for fillets and to plug the holes in the stringer. I insert the plugs encased with resin and patch with two layers of CSM. Starting with the smaller patch first. I quickly learned that CSM holds up better if you work two layers at once. Here you can see the plugs have been filled and a fillet of reinforced resin along the bottom of the stringer. And I place the first and smallest tabbing along the bottom, continuing with a dry layup. This layer is for waterproofing and protecting around the fuel tank. So two layers of one and a half ounce mat and gel coat should be a great improvement. The three inch roller holds resin quite well and seems to match the radius, which proves to be an advantage in the future. The second layer of tabbing is four inches wider and seems to settle in quite well as I race the clock before the fillet kicks. When I finally get a roller to it, both layers of mat fully embed into the fillet. I continue to work until I'm happy with the radius and the tabbing has no air bubbles. By using laminating resin, I can take pause for a minute to check the game plan and clean up the workstation as I prepare for the top of the stringer. Here is where my novice mistakes start adding up. I should have repaired the top of the stringer from the uneven effects of grinding and sanding. And the screw holes on the top of the stringer should have been filled in advance, cured and sanded. I should have filled the plugs, let them set and then continued and the fabric could have been wider. So next time I will do a dry fit to make sure the pieces are perfect. And I'll use the Sharpie marks to ensure the placement is correct. 
which is preferable? A single piece in a dry layup like this, or multiple overlapping pieces in a wet layup? And which is the most efficient use of the resin? Either way, using my wet station as it is means this would be done in three sections. By this time, the roller is a solid mass and no longer holds resin. I would eventually learn to change the sleeves as soon as this happens. But I continue until it's fully saturated, working both sides of the stringer. Here you can see how the uneven surface affects the fin roller. And ultimately the three inch roller seemed to fully saturate the material and fill the uneven surface with resin. This roller and sleeve would become the primary tool for the rest of the project. At the end of day one, both stringers are filleted, tabbed, and capped. And I was able to pre-coat each bulkhead with laminating resin. I filled in low spots with structural putty and built a solid radius on the forward bulkhead. Here in the starboard side, the fillet looks like air bubbles, but in fact, it's the milled fibers in the structural putty. And the white line at the top of the stringer looks like air bubbles too, as you'd expect with the rough surface left from the grinder. But when I drill into it, there's no void. It looks to be little bunches of mat held in the corner from the first layer, as you can see here. We can see the opaque nature of the milled fibers in the fillet, and this little spot was the only significant bubble. Although the plan is for no sanding between layers, there are some pokey bits and sharp edges to knock down. And the filled areas on the forward bulkhead are too rough for glassing. Sanding unwaxed resin isn't the best, but as I learned in the shelf test, even a small amount of sanding can improve the first gel coat layer. The amount of waste cannot be understated. Each mixing cup is over a dollar. Brushes, sleeves, and plastic bags cannot be reused. I was able to save about 50% of the mixing containers without breaking them. And these yogurt containers were a blessing. Being less brittle, I was able to save them quite easily. I find that I rarely mix more than 600 milliliters at a time, so I suggest buying 750 mil mixing cups in a large quantity right away. I don't know how many uses each container will get, but each time it saves cost and waste. Thank you for joining me today on Project Trophy. Hit subscribe and you'll be notified of the next episode. Please like and leave your comments or questions below.